Hey, Phantom here, coming back at you with another video. Today is the final episode of Alice Madness Returns. As usual, I'm very sad to see it go, but I'm also ready to move on to another game. Today's video is just gonna be very chill and relaxing. I'm going to be collecting all of the memories, pig snouts, and magula rooms that I haven't gotten yet so that I can 100% the game. And also the bottles that we didn't get yet. I'm going to go over past matters with you. This uh, document that was written by Dr. Wilson. Um, then we're gonna go over the character list. I downloaded extra content with the game, which includes some extra weapons and outfits. Each dress does something different, and uh, there's a few different weapons that do different things as well. Uh, they each have like a different perk, uh, which is really cool. We'll go over that. I'm gonna take a little bit of a break between this game and the next game. I have a couple of fun videos coming out in the meantime. Um, I'd like to get a baking video out for Easter. Let's see if I can. If I can't, then, um, it'll just be a baking video. I'm also going to post to this playlist, uh, the cuts, all of the cutscenes in the game and the memories. Uh, those each will be their own videos. No intros or outros or anything like that. I might do a video with all my closings, with the animations. Uh, I'm going to post some extra content to this playlist. So if you're interested in going back through the memories and the cutscenes on their own, you can go to my Alice playlist and you can get there from that. So whether you're new or not, while you're waiting for the next video to drop, if you're really into this game and you're into like the dark, gloomy, gritty kind of horror style, I have an Until Dawn Rush of Blood playlist and I have a Switchback VR playlist. So I noticed a lot of you missed that one. You can go and check that one out. That was really fun. I had fun playing that game. I dressed up for the intros. Uh, that was something that was like really cool and really fun to do. So if you're interested in that kind of style of game, uh, I have those playlists in the meantime while you wait for my next videos. Um, if you like the kind of more chill laid back videos, I have my Human Fall Flat playlist. If you like the goofy games, like which is something in between, like, you know, scary and not, uh, you can check out my Luigi's Mansion playlist or my Grab by the Ghoulies playlist. If you want something more fun and lighthearted while you wait for new content. So lots of exciting things. Yeah, that's it. I hope I covered everything. I hope you enjoy this video. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell your ghosts about me. Tell your demons about me. Tell your friends about me. All right, let's go. So you regain health while shrunk. Breakables drop more teeth and roses. Siren, enemies drop twice as many roses. I did feel like I was getting a lot of health. Oh my god, freaking gorgeous. Her, she's very pretty as well, her character. They did a good job. I love this dress. But we're gonna wear a dress that um, we haven't seen yet. It's cool to see that they all do something different too. They were probably were doing that stuff while I was playing. Silk Maiden. Enemies drop twice as many teeth. That's probably why I was getting so much money in that level, too. It's cool to know this stuff going back in, or if you guys didn't play the game yet, but you plan to. Oh, let me go back for a second. I really like the bows as well. I like this little piranha one. <laughs> it's cute. Sorry, I should have zoomed in for you before. Royal suit. Health limited to four roses total. I love this one too. God, it, I don't know, like, I, I feel like 
I should pick my favorite outfit. This one is probably the next one that I'll realistically cosplay as. The siren one, I got a little bit of work to do, if you know what I mean. But this one... This one's up there, but I think this one is my favorite still outfit of all of them. Obviously, I'm gonna wear shoes if I cosplay this one. I don't really feel like cutting my feet open while I'm out. Misstitched. Shrink sense duration is doubled. That's friggin' that's a cool bow too. I would I wanna be all of them. Honestly. This one's pretty neat too. Oh my god, caterpillar. Shrink sense always activated. She should be running around as a f caterpillar. <laughs> Her eyes all messed up. She's got little wings. Oh my god, that's cool. Look at that. What the heck? I'm like getting so excited. <laughs> Disable all rose drops from enemies. What? Oh my god, she looks cool. What the heck? Don't worry, I'm gonna get to be a few different kinds of dresses as I go back and look for things. What? Oh my god. Checkmate. Doubles damage for all weapons. Mm, I'm not as crazy about this style here. But, I mean, double damage for all weapons. Can't go wrong with that. Flesh Maiden. Hysteria anytime. Oh, cool. She's like a zombie. This one's pretty neat. Freaking eyeballs. Late but lucky. Imbued with the power of shrinking violets. Oh, I guess it just heals you. Oh my god, that is freaking awesome. Look at those eyes. I like this outfit. I don't know if you could tell. It's a rabbit tail for the bow. Hatress. Lose teeth instead of health. Oh, you, you lose money, huh? I'm liking, I'm digging the short hair look too. Oh, she's got a robot arm. to the beginning so let's take a look at the weapons all right I'll pick a dress hmm. I like this one I'll start with that one Warple Cleaver reduces damage from enemies by half. Mm. Octa Grinder, it's a little octopus. <laughs> Increases ammo limit. 
Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Hobby horse or a nightmare. Ooh. Restores health with each hit. That is cool. Yeah, we're gonna go with that. Teapot cannon or catnip cannon. Increases damage to enemies by half. We'll equip that when we go in with the cat costume. Sweet. Alright. Dress up. Playing dress up. Oh my god, I would have loved this as a little girl, like putting her in the different dresses and stuff. I mean, I still do it. Well, just listen to me. But. This is where I think I missed another thing. Yeah, I don't think I got this one. The railway running through Wonderland sounds charming, but inefficient. Noise and smoke, like steps and snails, perhaps. Best to forget that train. A mock turtle as conductor. Oh, no, I don't think that will do at all. Let me beat the f*** out of these assholes. Because I can, and then I'm gonna call it a night. Get ready, Freddy. Yeah, I did. Slice both your f***ing heads off at the same time. Oh, this is gonna be fun. You know, I can't lie, I was feeling a little bit annoyed. That I had to go back through the whole chapter, but you know what? This feels real good. We can just slaughter that guy. Amazing. Yeah, 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 we know. Come on. F going to ruin your day. Ruin it. Ruin it. That's right. There goes his head. Off with your head. Ah! I have a lot of anger still from this part that I'm holding on to. I'll be fine. I don't think I was in here. Yeah, I don't think I got this yet. Wait. I 
Okay, now here's the place that I know for a fact I missed a pig nose. And while I was editing, it was right back here. I must have been distracted. Yeah, and that has a bottle with it, so. Oh my god, what a disturbing scene. Sweet. Yep, 13 out of 14. And 17 out of 18. Alright, so this should be where this memory is, right after this pig snout. I'm pretty sure I already got that, so I'm just gonna go. I'm just showing you. And you see this crap? I wouldn't have thought to look for this. I know you hear me, you contrary child. Use the bed pan and let go of that wretched rabbit. What a lovely human being. Chris is. Get to like the next area to be safe. the Samoa Joe to walk away. How do you like it? You don't, do you? Yes, I am spamming the teacher pot cannon. No, I don't give it. So frustrating. Alright, so we're coming up to the boss fight here. And then after, we should have the memory that we need to get underneath this platform, along with. Um, I don't know. I think I got that pig snout already. Did you 
just use the stereo mode to so get some health from these guys. And the big guy is gonna be annoying. Excuse me, sir, I can't see. So our memory should just be right underneath us. Right under our feet. Excuse me. Alright, so apparently there is a keyhole somewhere down here that I used to when I initially played the game. Drop dead, Fred. I'm somewhere over here. So it's like, we got the pig nose. Was it the one that I saw earlier? <laughs> that I didn't see. knows the mischief began among your father's mountain of paper, Alice. The real question is how. Okay, it was that one. And here's the pig nose, too. Oh, look, there's a little guy up there. What is that? Hello, sir. Couldn't have been the bottle that we're missing. Was that the missing pig snout? Yep. 14 out of 14, 26 out of 26 memories. And we are just missing a bottle now. Which that could be like. I'm very intrigued by this little dude over here. I'm a very person. What are you talking about? It reminds me of, uh, the Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland, uh, where the, the Father Time has all those, uh, where Time has all those, like, little minutes and seconds, the little robots.
I changed outfits for you, as you can see. So I have two ideas of what it might be. Otherwise, I'd like to maybe move on and come back later. How cute is this outfit? Alright, um, two parts. Thank you, Sam. It might be this area. So there's dominoes, and then there's um, like a spot in the tree stump or something like that. First thing, a dominoes. I'm gonna kill these holes ah! first. Ah, here it is. Who's gonna see that? Oh no, it wasn't from the Duchess's house. Yes. That is where we came from. Alright, so they talked about dominoes. After this part, possibly. Finish your suit, girls. Bovine juveniles. <laughs> See it. What the? F what a sneaky spot. I'm pretty sure this is gonna be it. Because I do not remember going this way. Let's see. Yes! Alright! Great, now I got like a sh ton of footage to go through. I gotta delete everything. Spot. So, we have everything in chapter one. Alright, All right, I'm gonna check something in Tundra full.
I don't think I turned directly around and went behind me. No. Even though I'm always telling you guys to do that. <laughs> Give me a second to see uh, where the other one is. I think this would be neat to go into this chapter. There's a bunch of um, change the show. spots in this one I could have missed. Yeah. Looking sweet. I don't think I saw that last time I did this. I might have been maybe distracted by the over here. How do you like that? That's kind of the thing too, is like guessing, like would you have gone that way? Or not? Get shit out here. 
Delighted to see you again, my dear. Your arrival is filled with fortunatality itself. Really? I didn't even know... Never mind. My pregnant show is about to pop. It requires only a medicament of your health velocity. I don't have much experience, but I do need to reconstruct my... Rick and Barter, have a nice screwdriver, nearly new, or a nice hammer if you... There's a train that's corrupting Wonderland, and I'm looking for help to restrain or destroy it. Most vexatious, no doubt, would address that monstrosity directly. That's to say, eventually. Now, let's intermediate more important matters. Due to a logisterical foul-up, some of the show's requisites need to be gathered. It hardly seems you're ready for the show. Why can't you assemble these things yourself? An impresario has arrangements. Ducks in a row, fish to fry, calls to Newcastle, etc., etc. Fetch the script from the writer, then we can batter or clatter or natter as the case may be. Is the writer cantankerous? To a personage of your distinguished repudiation? I blush at the notionality. He's an octopus, by the by. Lives over that way. Ta-da! This would be really <clears throat> sad if I didn't see this here. Hold on. What an idiot! <laughs> oh my god, for real? <laughs> what? What the f*** was I doing the first time I was playing this? Wow! Oh my god. Well, we look really cool, so... It makes me feel better. How the f*** did I not see that? That is bull- Alright, so we are on Oriental Grove. We need one pig snout, two memories, one radula room we missed somehow. And thank god we have all the bottles because this one, my god. Alright, so we need two Bumby memories, the guy on fire and flush away pain. Alright. We might as well be festive going in here. So this is where we need to go for our Bumby memory. The guy on fire. Cute, actually. I must say. All right, so we're gonna skip all this and get to the village. Oh, that's see, I didn't even like realize. So while I'm like this, 
I can always see the purple stuff. That must be what that meant. I didn't realize what it meant. I was like, what do you mean shrink sense always? I thought it meant we were always going to be running around like small, like a little bug. But we can like see. That's really useful, actually. Alright, so we're in the gloomy village. So it says there's going to be a dark door and we have to, oh look at that nice I realized I forgot to put subtitles back on for you guys last time yeah uh, where is it What Nurse Witless said was, the fire whooshed in, lit her up like the guy on Cracker Night. No one knows how she survived except Alice, and she's stoom, remember? Hmm. Oh my god, I love it, she's so cute. All right, so cool. That's the memory that we need. Let's get to a save point. A snout hidden in the bamboo. That doesn't sound like one that I have. So I'm going to fight the Daimyo Wasp and see if that peg snout is in the bamboo where they said it would be. Right. Finally we're here. She who saves a single soul saves the universe. Remember? Alright, so they said it's hidden in the bamboo. Uh, oh, I hear one. like over here.
Am I stupid? Why can't I see it? Probably gonna be so obvious when I go back and edit it. What the hell? I definitely did not get this one. Definitely not. I didn't hear it on my way in either. This is dark. It has to do with my TV settings as well. What the heck? Alright, well, there's that. Let's see what else we're missing now. So now we have... 11 out of 11 pig snouts. Now we are missing one radula room. Let's see what that could be. And a memory. So... Bumby, flush away the pain, and one radula room. Ooh, much prettier in the light. I don't know why the last thing was so dark. I don't remember it being that dark when I played last time. Alright. So we're gonna go to trunk first, cause the uh, memory we need is gonna be there. Flush away pain. Stretching out my legs. A bridge okay. will complete the path, but this substance has blocked the way. Can you help us to move? <laughs> So this is where it's going to be. Let's see if I can see the platform they're talking about. It's not that. Oh, I see it. I think I see it. Okay. These ah. things aren't going to stop spawning. They're extremely annoying.
the unpleasant from your mind, Alice. Reject the painful as you would the repulsive and depraved. Forgetting the things out. Alright, that's the memory we needed. Yep, 19 out of 19. Now we're gonna go find the radial room as soon as I can save the game. I'm not gonna make you watch this crap again because this is gonna be extremely annoying to try and get through this. So. Okay, now we are going to West Peak Prison Village. I think I might have a little while yet till I get to where I need to go. I do a dumbass, like six dumbass puzzles. I get the f out of here. How's that sound? Okay. Bye. As I was saying, for so rudely interrupted. This is the area. After this area, when we you go learn, into the close. cave, I can recite Red Riding Hood backward. It's going to be one. Tables, we get to, I, to that radula room I think we didn't do. Really? Persuade me. To remove the obstruction, wake the frog and empty his belly. Wake that? What about its tongue? A and the prospect of warts? Ooh. Anyway, how do you know? I imagined how it was done while I was sleeping.
See you later, alligator. Perhaps if I rang that gong, he'll wake up. Perhaps. So after this, when we go into the cave over there. I forgot how I get over there. I think I have to do something over here. Go in, what the f- This one is long. Alright, so this is gonna be where the room is. They told us to stick to the left. And there will be a path. Alright, they didn't say keep left, they said keep right. Right, they said- Ah, oh, here it is! Oh my god, what the hell? Keep right- and turn around. Yeah, I definitely wasn't here. Alright, so let's do it. Of course it's one of these, because why not? This is cool though, it's like a nighttime one. Did it? Yeah. All right, and it already saves here, so sweet. All right, chapter three is complete. I guess this makes sense, right? The other one that would have made sense was this one, so. Yeah, so I have to wear all the dresses. I don't have to, but I'd like to. Right. Let's see here.
we have all the memories, thank god. We're missing one snout and two bottles. And I'm gonna have to try to remember. Hopefully there's none in card bridge. That one was like... Alright, so... This is probably a bottle I'm missing because apparently you have to take a very specific path. So when the slide splits into two here in the least wing, we have to take the right path. The slide will go under a small card building. Jump on the ledge of the card building to grab a bottle. This is probably the bottle that I'm missing. Can we see what we look like? Well, it's not as terrible as I thought it would look. No? Because you do have the kind of figure, Alice, though, where anything, I'm sure, would be flattering on you. I'm really not good at this. Just try to take it slow here. Oh, I see the building. Hi, yeah, I don't know who the f- <gasps> Said right? That's a left? Jerk? Take the left path. Left. Whoop, there it is. Sweet. Get in our ugly ass chest dress. All right. And then I'm going to assume that the last bottle is going to be with the pig snout. We need to save, though. So we're going to... Left! If I can make it through this... locked room is little more than a cage. A prison by another name. I despise concealment of any kind. Mm. 
Oh, that was it. All right. I actually, I didn't need a thing for that. It's cool. I have Bug Alice equipped again because it's, I feel like it's going to really help. I, if I have to freaking go back to Card Ridge, or Card Bridge, whatever the f ah! it'll really help me. Uh, so there's two spots I want to check. Two possibilities in this, and then if not, then I think it's gonna be stupid freaking garbage. <laughs> She's so cute though. The little antennas. Alright, I have Bug Alice. Because I feel like she's really good at me.
Oh, cool. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I saw this when I played last time. This over here. There was a pig snout over here. Somewhere. Platforms. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I, I don't. That is cool. Yep. 11 out of 11. Sweet. No, I just gotta save. Let's move on. All right. Complete. And last but not least, we have the dollhouse. We're missing a Bumby, a family memory, little Pris, Dr. Wilson, two Dr. Wilsons. One snout and one radula. Beloved toys are to children, children often are to grown-ups. Objects of fancy and imagination and eventually discarded. That's true, actually. Very true. Alright, so that's the beloved beloved toys memory we were missing. A Dr. Wilson one. This is a really sneaky spot, this one. Alright, so we're going to get to save, and then we can go. Uh, the next one is going to be in Frog's Way. There's actually a bunch of memories in uh, Frog's Way. I've heard self-reliance is a virtue. Now you've heard it.
just throw into the wall over here, you idiot. Anyway. Let me show you this. This is really crazy right here. See this crap? What the f <laughs> Who would have guessed this? Sh <laughs> so sneaky. Season campaigner. Yeah, we got all the pigs now. That must be what that is. Ooh, and a bunch of memories came out. Let's see. You're not a cat, my dear. One life is your allotment. Please be more careful with the carving knife. All right, I found all the family memories. So that was one life to live, the little one that I needed. And then there's a couple more in this area as well. Let me see. gonna get the Dr. Bumby memory. Ah. Oh. I shouldn't call him doctor. He's not a doctor. He's an animal. Doctor Wilson's not fooled, Alice. Discipline must be maintained. Cleanliness is optional. Whatever you've imagined about electrical current, it's not half of it. It can be a persuasive teacher, strict mind, demanding. Whatever you say, you f <laughs> jerk. Ladies and people. There's a lot of assholes in this game. So we need two more memories a rad and a radula room and that's it. We are good to go, kitties. Kitties? You're good to go. What are you thinking? So we're missing Bumby defining a leech and Dr. Wilson science versus quackery. Alright, so we're gonna get to a save point, and we actually don't need to go anywhere until Dolltown Cellars. So, I'm gonna save, and then uh, we'll restart from there. Alright, so, we're gonna kill all this stuff. Instructions here.
I didn't know what was gonna happen there. All right. Threats, promises, and good intentions don't amount to action. Fragile room is here as well. Damaged people feed on the emotions of others, Alice. Their strengths and weaknesses. Really? Because it kind of seems the other way around sometimes. Like, the people know that you're damaged, so they take advantage of it. Just like you did. I'm sure you know. As you know. All right, so this is going to be our last Radular room. Exciting. I'm like slumping down the couch because I'm tired. It took me a while. There's no time to wait. There's no time at all. Kill or be killed. Like I should have read it. Go to sleep now. Come, Alice, sleep. don't dawdle. You've already missed the train. Sleep. Yay, we did it. <laughs> Painting the town red. All right. I mean, you could have did painting the roses red. But that's all right. Radular rooms complete. So, we just need our last memory. And we should be good. It is the... Science vs. Quackery. Let's see here. Here we go. The next one's in Doll Girl's Pursuit. That's the next part. gonna put on the last dress we didn't wear yet and we're gonna head in there She's smiling in this form. Look at the ledge or something like that. Uh, look down from the edge of the wooden planks. 
in the area. You can find the stairway leading to a keyhole. I actually think that I might have seen what it's talking about. Not this one, the next area. Because I might have seen that while I was editing. By accident. Alright, let's kill everything here. That's right, I'm losing teeth instead of health. I'm pretty much immortal in that case. Oh my god. Still don't want to lose all my teeth. I've been collecting the entire game. I think, yeah, yeah. I saw the ledge while I was editing. I was like, Sh "Here we go." The gulf separating effective. Everything fit to remember. As narrower than professional opinion would admit. Likewise, the distance between knowledge and ignorance. Sweet, we did it. Alright, 8 out of 8, 17 out of 17, 4 out of 4, and 13 out of 13. We are 100 percent ladies and gentlemen. Alrighty. Okay. Past matters. Notes extracted from the casebook of Dr. Wilson, M.D. Rutledge Asylum. On November 5th, 1863, Alice Little was severely burned in the fire that destroyed her family home in Oxford and took the lives of her parents and her older sister, Lizzie. While the girl's seared skin gradually healed during a year of hospitalization, the trauma caused by her family's horrific demise deepened. The orphan's condition swung from comatose to uncontrollably hysterical and back in the course of a given hour. Learned medical opinion deemed her a danger to herself and an indefinite term of institutional confinement was ordered. 
At her preliminary examination at Rutledge on November 11th, 1864, Alice presented as deaf, dumb, and blind to stimulation. She seemed, in the brutal expression of the practice, in training for the coffin. Only her age saved her from immediate assignment to the notorious Bedlam Catacombs. Despite insensible passivity, preternatural quietness, and evident dementia, a course of treatment was prescribed. During the first six months of 1865, she was subjected to all the best contemporary remedies, without result. Cold plaster sessions and bloodletting were ineffective and unproductive. Applications of experimental shock apparatus, useless. Likewise, massive doses of laudanum, laudanum, in a desperate toss, restraints, including a straitjacket, solitary confinement, sensory deprivation, confiscation of her toy rabbit, and cancellation of afternoon tea were tried, and failed completely. She would not respond. She did not resist treatment or in any way react to it. She simply ignored it. She shut down completely and shut out the world. Shortly after the diagnosis of demented was confirmed, she fell into a comatose state. Despite her mental infirmity, she appeared physically fit. Staff remained hopeful, not to say optimistic, that she would regain her balance. Her bodily functions were reasonably attended to, but there were pitifully few signs of recovery. Then, in the autumn of 1873, after eight years of fitful sleep, Alice spoke by drawing. Her first picture was of an alarming cat. But only bouts of angry, incomprehensible screaming and hysterical sobbing followed this dubious opening of communication. She became intermittently convulsive and had to be sedated frequently. From time to time, Various medicinal preparations and chemical potions were forcibly administered to little effect, and she required more than verbal encouragement to eat. Something that did look like progress occurred in late November of that year. While her, while her inarticulate mutterings and screams continued, she responded, if not appropriately, at least comprehensively, to her surroundings. When grossly insulted by ward orderlies, the superintendent's imbecilic nephews, Alice, without warning, scared off one of the twins with her furious attack. She handled her spoon like a knife and made the other bleed like a stuck pig. But then she turned the weapon on herself. Fortunately, staff prevented her from doing terrible physical damage to herself, but she regressed to her previous state. Days of silence, sometimes sketching fantastical scenes and characters, spouting senseless poetry, then incomprehensibly raving, catatonic trances, and unintelligible shouts and groans. Suddenly, in the spring of this year, there was a change. She began to speak. Civil, then vulgar. Declarative, then cryptic speech, in and out of her chaotic, violent, and deranged and terrifying dream world. But the periods of lucidity grew longer. She became confidential. She shared some of her sadness, her grief over the loss of her family and herself. But most often she droned on and on with about fantastical visions. These delusions had no reality, of course. But conversation makes a connection with the world. This was a significant development. Cognant but often disconnected and to me meaningless talk about wonderland, tea parties, the fungiferous forest, boojums, jack bombs, snarks, demon dice, and the dastardly red queen was nonetheless encouraging, though her moods ran the gamut from despondent gloom to vicious anger and confident calm. This was a positive prospect, but the emergence of a normal Alice, a cured Alice, was not to be. Throughout the summer and into the autumn, she seemed, to vacillate, she seemed to vacillate between fantasy and reality. By October, my own health failing, I recognized I had done everything I was capable of doing for her. 
After a decade of treatment, having addressed her psychic condition with the full array of our ages therapies, she had emerged from her catatonia. But we didn't know why. I once thought the drug regimen had been effective. Now, I vigorously doubt it. Reunification with her childhood toy? It turns out that Rabbit was a stand-in for the original, which disappeared years ago. Something I said? She did nothing at my command, instruction, entreaty, or request. To the extent she was cured, she, I believe, cured herself. As she appeared more or less stable, though plagued by hallucinations that frustrated more than frightened her, I succumbed to the superintendent's entreaties. As further cure seemed doubtful, further confinement was deemed a waste of everyone's time. Lacking family and friends, but possessed of a small inheritance, she left Rutledge in November, depressed but committed to the struggle for her sanity. Nurse Whitless found her a situation with Dr. Bumby, and Alice was released to his care at the Houndsditch, at the Houndsditch home and refuge for wayward youth in the East End. I wish them both well. So that's, that's like the uh, more background to the game. And let's go over the characters now since we got everybody. We should. Alright. Dr. Angus Bumby. The asshole. The founder of the Houndsditch Home and Refuge for Wayward Youth is my landlord, employer, and therapist. A rising star in the philanthropic community, he serves the East End's vast, deprived juvenile population. His mantra is, I'm winning the war against depravity, misery, and degradation by training my unfortunate patients to forget their pasts. While modesty is not among his attributes, he does important work. What a dangerous fellow. Chris Whitless. Before being sacked from Rutledge Asylum, she was a night nurse on my ward. She mistakenly imagines we're friends on that account. Her addiction to gin has forced her to become a dog's body for a variety of East End practitioners. No errand is too menial or beneath her dignity. Her wages can't support her needs to be constantly inebriated. <laughs> Not sure how she supplements her income, but I'd rather not think about it. God. Oh look, apparently that's a character. An unnatural and hostile combination of ruined mechanical parts vomits pollution and slashes through the muck it dispenses. A mindless industrial disease. It oozes grease and organic slime and wields a dangerous weapon. Its unseemly sound and noisome stench completes its menacing aura. An awful head adds to its revolting appearance. That description was very well written. I tell you what, when I'm writing my next book, and I was writing my first book, that was something I always struggled with, was describing things in that way. And I would sit there for a really long time like just because I've never been good at that ever but uh, I think I did a good job in what I produced but like this is like perfect way to describe something like writing wise so I'm gonna have to do that all over again when I write my next book Bolterfly what pass for fauna in the hatter's domain resemble winged crossbow bolts they nest in the now wrecked machinery of which they of which they are very protective. They become fractious when disturbed, and for dumb creatures they're annoyingly resourceful. Madcaps the erstwhile guardians of the domain appear to be armed with outsized versions of Hatter's household cutlery. Hatter was never particularly discriminating in his guest list, but I never imagined he had giants for tea. 
Like many long-term retainers, their loyalty has outlasted their usefulness and their sense. Still, this old guard can be dangerous. Slithering Ruin. Ruined and repulsive, this reckless waste of protoplasm has as much in common with maggots and leeches and Dr. Bumby as it does with slimy garden slugs. Secretive by nature, surprisingly aggressive when cornered. Eyepot. These ornately crafted beasts, once the pride of the Hatter's table, seemed destined for scrap. Understandably, they're shirty, unsociable, bloody angry, and dangerous. Because the eye is obviously vulnerable, they fire scalding projectiles afar. But they're not cowards. No, they are not. They're owls. <laughs> Speaking of... Menacing Ruin. A more perilous version of the insidious ruin. Every vile and depraved feature of the former has evolved to become more loathsome, foul, and hazardous in the latter. Who could have imagined it? I hate you. I hate you. Cheshire Cat. I suppose I could admit that he's my alter ego, perfectly willing to give voice to the doubts and fears I'm unable to express. He's usually not courageous enough to demand a terribly rash risk of me. By turns cynical, sarcastic, distant, philosophical, flip and earnest, he can render valuable service, as long as he can keep himself out of harm's way. I know he means to help me, but he is, after all, a cat, and they're not known for altruism. What do you think, Pucks? He's sleeping, so, yep. But that's what I like about them, though. They're not gonna, like... Cats are not gonna, like, fake it for you. They're always honest. White Rabbit. To say I'd follow this demanding creature anywhere might be a romantic exaggeration. We have a history, and the list of places he's led me is long, and the outcomes have not always been happy. A frantic, harried creature, he's manic and occasionally aggressive. I don't even think he was besides in the Radula rooms in this game at all. Duchess. The Queen of Hearts has an exceptionally unattractive cousin. <laughs> well, let's say ugly and move on. She once behaved rudely to me, and I had to turn her around, as it were. Now her caring assistance feels threatening. I prefer her old self. Then I knew what I was dealing with. Mad Hatter. Once there was always time for tea at the Hatter's place. Wacky they were, all in good fun. Things turned bad when he joined the Queen's service. He received a serious reprimand. Now, his undernourished physique is in parts, and his crafted mechanical obsessions seem hopeless wreckage. Despite his comeuppance, he's still a bit of a blowhard, but not evil, I think. March Hare. The Hatter's erstwhile tea time companion has somehow turned the tables on his former host. The Hare is mad, of course, but he's not a lunatic. At least I don't think so. Despite his menacing palaver, he just seems unnaturally fixated on keeping the Hatter down and making himself a bloody nuisance to me. That he was. Dormouse. Dormy is still sleepy, cynical, and stupid. A, mar a martinet to the March Hare. Imagine how far down the food chain a creature must fall before securing that august position. I'd say his new role as troublemaker had gone to his head, but that would presume he had a brain. Bulbfly. I don't think I saw these. 
Professor Swan's claims concerning incandescent lighting signal the end of an era for gas lamps and candles, a frightening and insupportable prospect. I don't know. Maybe they were kind of just floating around at some point. I noticed that uh, some of them were. Oh, I, I saw one of these guys. Okay, so they definitely were. Auto, automaton? Hardly more interesting than a cuckoo in a clock, let alone a Talos or a Pandora. But then again, I'm not Hephaestus. Yeah, we saw this guy uh, earlier in the video. I didn't see the front of him, though. Cat! This lovely white feline reminded me of Snowdrop, Dinah's rambunctious kitten. I try not to think about her. She'd be an old lady now, if she's alive. Not really, because if you were eight... How long has it been since the fire? I can't imagine Alice is... Not really far out of her 20s. If she is, she has to be like mid-20s. Early 20s. It's possible the cat's still alive. Tux is, uh, 11. That's not old for a cat at all. Cats live a long time. They can live to, like, in their 20s. It's not common, but it's more common than you would think. Where the f*** is this? I haven't seen this. Dark Snail. The degraded veil was overpopulated with disgusting creatures, so I dismissed this spiky cephalop cephalopod. He feeds on his own regurgitated bile. Oh, okay, so I guess they didn't put this in the game. That means... Dodo mech. As if the creature hadn't suffered enough, I imagined the extinct bird kitted out like others in the Hatter's mad and mechanized realm. Footman. His appearance formal and intelligence modest. We're not required for this adventure. He's still a good frog. Also, they didn't put this in the game either. Neat. I guess that was going to be a character we were going to interact with, maybe, at some point. Mock Sparrow. The Mock Turtle regarded this creature as a threat. He has so little self-confidence. It would have been cruel to bring the bird into the mix. I saw... One of these in the beginning of the game, but I guess there were going to be more than that. Snail. These we saw. This benign being was to keep me company in the Vale of Tears, but the changes there would not have been to his liking. Dodo. Pigs, humans, and ravenous macaques all contributed to the extinction of the dodo on its native Morit... Moritus? Mor... Mor... Moritius? The very strange bird was once considered a myth, but Clark's reports justified Papa's belief that someone or something slated to go the way of the dodo was much more than rhetorical flourish. Nan Sharp. Always a substantial and independent woman, Nanny taught French and music to Lizzie and me. Disastrous choices in companionship, penury, and an iron-hard sense of pride have led her to a life of not-quite-squalid prostitution. From her digs at the Mangle Mermaid, she managed a string of professional women on the street. She visited me several times at Rutledge. 
What does squalid mean? Extremely dirty and unpleasant, especially as a result of poverty or neglect. The squalid, overcrowded prison. Showing or involving a contemptible lack of moral standards. A squalid attempt to save themselves from electoral embarrassment. Jack Splatter, a bullying, bad-tempered, congenital criminal. He's built a heinous career on the labor of desperate women. Once Nan Sharp's procurer and self-appointed protector, he runs his sordid trade out of the Mangled Mermaid. I snark. Sightless eyes do not inhibit this vile predator from ruling the tundra. Living flesh is no less at risk than carry on. While his parts seem mismatched, his antenna provide protection and his teeth are lethally efficient. Don't we know it? Shipwreck shark. Sailors are right. Sailors are rightly terrified by sharks. The voracious apex predators are notorious for their unpredictable temperaments and indiscriminate appetites. But only would, if it could, would fear these creatures. Self-made from ruined privateers, clippers, and ships of the line, they consume wood to keep body and soul together. I wish they'd eat one another. Mersquid. I did not see these. Expertly crafted figureheads, mute but proud emblems that once graced a ship's great prow, are furious with their sunken fate. Rather than suffer in silence, they wail their own siren songs and bring down other ships with the anchors, chains, and other ballast they've collected. I guess this was going to be in the game, but it didn't quite make it in there. Do I have to censor that? I can't see. Are there nipples? I think I do. Cannon crab. Oh, it's my dad. Well armed with great size, an impregnable carapace, and a self-declared honorable mission, these, this noble crustacean is a formidable foe. One may only hope it has a soft underbelly. And lots of salt. Drowned sailor. Poor souls are eternally conflicted. Necessity sent them to the sea. The economy depends on them, but they do not profit. Reluctant to sign on a two-year voyage, they are shanghaied, complain about everything. They are lashed and put on short rations. They are even discouraged from learning how to swim. They trust none but themselves. Their shades do likewise. Colossal Ruin an infinitely more powerful and undeniably more disgusting manifestation of the menacing ruin. What was formerly foul and detestable is heinous, even monstrous here. The ruin seems relentless. It just keeps getting worse. Mock Turtle The former master of the railroad is kind, but self-absorbed. Weepy and fatalistic with a melancholic disposition, he talks too much. He's not clever, but he thinks he might be. If you could just summon up the energy to try. Carpenter. This distinctive, sententious master of the malaprop lacks a scintilla of skill in his eponymous trade. Wouldn't know a hammer from a handsaw. Appears to have appointed himself lord of the theatrical universe. Given his subjects, I don't suspect there was much resistance. Walrus. 
If observation is judged, he's not missed a meal in his life. Pigs at a trough have more dignity. A big hungry creature with nothing on his mind except his outsized appetite and his self-proclaimed reputation as a great thespian. Where's his hat? Fish couple. Keeping children amused is a priority of indulgent parents the world over. Lucky children. But these two have more on their minds than the family's entertainment. They're at odds in their opinions of the carpenter, his character, his creation, and his role in protecting them from corruption. I suppose I'll have to test their credibility. Fish people. Octopus. Oh, his name is Octopus. I was saying before I was being rude because I was just calling him the Octopus. It's literally just Octopus, so I don't feel bad now. The carpenter sent me to collect a script from this glass... Glaswegian Lush. He's angry about something, but not nasty. Overfond of his own opinion, but a decent sense of play, with some outstanding physical skills. I suspect, if he's ever sober. Music fish. Oh, it's a fish. I didn't know what the f*** this was. <laughs> I had no idea, you know? I didn't know what to call it. Divas from Covent Garden to La Scala have jitters before a performance. Expressed as vital, unsatisfiable needs, they preemptively excuse things going badly. By such, the talent tries to insulate itself from failure, which is much more often imagined than real. No excuse, however, will deflect the condemnation deserved by this tone-deaf, talentless, time-serving performer. <laughs> yeah. Tugs is not a fan. Oyster Starlet. Without a script, this pearless theatrical dunce must rely on mangled cliches as a substitute for sensible speech. Actors seem to often forget how to speak spontaneously in their own voices. Mayor. Oh no! Why, why would you put this picture? <laughs> this is so sad. <laughs> Of course they put this. Like many discredited or discarded politicians, the mayor seems sufficiently deluded that he refuses to accept rejection as a sign of rejection. I know that denial is a dangerous thing. I don't always behave as if I know. Turtle chest. Sometimes the treasures you seek are just out of reach, evading your grasp as if they have a mind of their own. Yeti. Despite grand and self-serving claims to being the embodiment of unrestrained brutality, mystery, and fear, this poor fellow never even rose to the level of abominable. Piranha. Papa's copy of Henry Bates' Amazon Adventures was dog-eared when I found it. The illustrations were thrilling. A school of voracious man-eaters. Imagine. Yeah, I don't think these made it in. Wilton Radcliffe. Formerly an Oxford magistrate and my father's solicitor, he is the executor of our family's estate, most of which he claims was consumed by my treatment at Rutledge Asylum, an awkward, confirmed bachelor. Radcliffe's parents, after foreign office postings in Tokyo, Shanghai, perished in the Sepoy Rebellion. Sepoy Rebellion. 
He keeps the mementos of their lives in the Orient. He's fussy and secretive, but I have little idea what he might be trying to conceal. Mute. This mute had a sufficiently melancholic face and disposition to suit any funeral, but his profession pointed me in unproductive directions and I needed to ignore him. Samurai Wasp Ravagers, despoilers, and murderers, these self-proclaimed samurai have corrupted the blameless and defenseless origami ant's way of life. It's a cruel lie. They violated the philosophy of that noble warrior class, Bushido. They're merely expert killers who have expropriated the weapons of their namesake, sword, shield, and longbow. Unlike true samurai, they protect nothing, are loyal to nothing, and have no honor. That's right. You don't. Samurai Ink Wasp While not terribly clever, strong, or dangerous, there's a seemingly endless supply of soldiers available to support the samurai's mayhem. They remind me of the grubs. They're unpleasantly alike. Lion Chop. Though nearly immobile, I'd argue that this creature's signature maneuver is quite enough to terrify a hardened pyromaniac. He uses a healthy fear of fire as an additional weapon. Yeah, I'm really not his biggest fan. Daimyo Wasp. Though each of the samurai wasps appear to act on their own authority, some fraction of them seem to be of a higher rank. More skill with their weapons may give them higher standing in their diseased society. They may give orders to others. They are, of course, equally reprehensible. Perhaps more so. Jerk. Drifting Ruin. I actually really ended up hating these somewhere along the line. They just, especially when at those parts where they're just spawning and they don't stop. Another arrow in this abomination's bulging quiver of mayhem. It moves faster, it's bigger, and it can fly. What's next? Impregnability? Immortality? Who dreamed this up? Caterpillar. Despite his questionable habits, his uncongenial advice, his stern prickly manner, and an aura of portentous mystery, this wise creature is my personal, directly communicative, Delphic oracle. It's not always easy to guess what he means. He got to turn into a butterfly. Ooh, that's cool. I didn't notice his wings are like a, a tiger or something. See, it's got the, the face. The eyes, the nose, and the mouth on the bottom of the wings. Cool. Origami ant. It's the bug people. They share labor and prize communication. They are socially sophisticated, resourceful, and industrious. But their society's health, its very existence, is dependent on the kindness of strangers. Their soldier class is virtually useless against hostile strangers. The impotent must make terrible bargains. It's Bug Sensei. Origami Ant Elder. Knowledge gathered from experience is often insufficient to forestall tragic consequences. These elders seem to know what must be done to avert disaster, but they are unable to do it. Origami Ant Monk. Few societies properly value their contemplative, artistic, or spiritual members. Action of nearly any description with nearly any outcome is disproportionately valued even by them. Humpty Dumpty. Well, he did sit on a wall, and he fell off, etc. Fancied himself a kind of authority figure, but acted more like security guard at the market stall. And in fact, couldn't secure his belt. 
I don't know where this was. Empress Wasp. She who must be obeyed and continuously fed, evidently. All these so-called samurai in service and sacrificed so she can dine sumptuously. Royalty shares some common traits, irrespective of species. I don't remember seeing this. I, I wonder if it didn't make it to the game. Maybe this is why they were doing what they were doing in the village. It's kind of like more background on that. She looked like she would have been annoying to fight. Look at all the <laughs> knives in her hand. Good riddance. Oriental frog. Quite possibly the largest frog I've ever seen. Although maybe that was because I was shrunk by the caterpillar smoke. Solving his indigestion nearly gave me an upset stomach as well. I guess Alice doesn't like frogs. Fred the cop. Typical Bobby by the book. What's all this then nonsense? Not vicious, not cruel, just not very imaginative or sympathetic. I suppose I don't encourage much. Card guard. Without weapons, the Queen's reckless guards aren't much more than fodder in a fight. They were never really good with their hands, but this current bout of clawing demands caution. There are so many of them, and they're eager to give up their lives. Even dead, their corpora delecti, or delecti and remnants can cause a problem. These are cool looking though. Armored card guard. The wicked staff they carry makes them dangerous, but ponderous. Still, were their weapon to hit its target, they wouldn't need speed to deliver the coup de grace. Like Finn Balor. Executioner. With less intelligence and imagination than a wind-up toy, this brute does the bidding of the queen. Her creature, its orders out of date, is certain to fall hard when he falls. But until then, he's so much more than a heartache. More like a <sighs> headache. God. White King. Amiable, courageous, a bit befuddled, a bit pedantic, loyal, not especially competent. Reminds me of Papa. You call your dad stupid. <laughs> Queen of Hearts. After numerous challenges and defeats, she still shows an ungovernable passion, a blind and aimless fury. She's still a force in Wonderland, even though her desires for unquestioned authority and adherence to her rules have been defeated. She is still a power-mad, irrational, and irresponsible hypocrite, but she's part of me too, and not destructible for cause. Chess player. Papa's chessmen were nearly friends to a solitary child. Mr. Radcliffe's outsized angry and servile pieces poisoned that pleasant memory. Dr. Wilson. Had a reputation as a capable and innovative physician, but to me his questions always seemed intrusive, his prodding ill-conceived, his practices dubious at best. I don't think he meant me harm. I was a great disappointment to him. Nurse Cratchit. A feeble-minded, mean-spirited toady, like many of her ilk. Barely suited for emptying bedpans and mopping up vomit. She was no friend to me. Tell him how you feel, Alice. Orderly Tweedles. The superintendent's repulsive nephews are cruel by disposition and training. Like all bullies, they're potentially dangerous. Fortunately, they're dumb as rocks. Doll Girl. The female of the species, so to speak, is equally objectionable. 
Their depraved maker played no favorites. The volume in his clothing appears to conceal more than her body would demand. Bitch babies. I hate these. To construct a flying, vomiting, killing machine in the guise of four-legged female infant is certainly the proof of a diseased mind. If more proof were needed. Doll maker. This heinous criminal assumed the benign title of a decent craftsman to deceive the world, and perhaps himself. The lie must be exposed, the truth will be out, or I will perish. Insane children. Once the hapless tools of my nemesis, these mistreated, insulted, and long-suffering juveniles have lost sight and all hope of returning to normal. I know them better than I like, and not as well as I should. Insane Child Leader If the metaphor has it right that in the kingdom of the blind, the one-eyed are kings, there's certainly an analog among the insane children. Though whether their king has assumed her role by virtue of being less insane is debatable. Toy Soldiers It's hardly surprising this fellow couldn't pass muster. He showed himself a timid warrior and unfit for any duty more exacting than watching smoke rise. I guess this guy didn't make it into the game. Unless they were, but they were like statues or something. Da boy. Not surprisingly, this Jerry built nailed together malevolent automation, masquerading as a child, violates every mother's wise admonition. Her injunction. Don't play with scissors would fall on deaf ears if he had any. He cares nothing for sense. He doesn't have any of that either. I wish I'd had a hammer. Oh my god. Yeah, these definitely didn't make it in. Dog baby. This grotesque aberration of nature seems to have already been incapacitated before I arrived. Perhaps turned on and made a mockery of by its fellow abominations? A tragedy that such lovely ears should be wasted on such a pitiful face. Yeah, this didn't make it into the game. They pretty much said that. So I'm gonna assume like the other ones didn't either. And we're back to the beginning. Alright. We have 100%ed the game. Thank you very much for watching. I can't say this will be the last time I play on the channel. Maybe I'll do some interesting things further down the line in the future. But, um... Yeah. Straight to my heart I'd never noticed But you were never there, you were never there hey. You give me roses, set me apart All I feel was bliss But you were never there, you were never I want us to be what we used to be this night Baby, just another fight But you don't want to see me cry there is no way that it's never going there I think it better and I swear I follow you no matter where